Hello, I'm Vincent. And I'm Andrew. And uh, today we thought we'd talk about some interesting Commonwealth British Empire items. I've got some uh, Cape Tranglers and I thought I'd just uh, try and illustrate the difference between the so-called normal Tranglers and the woodblock Tranglers. And what have you got? I've got a couple of very special Australian postal history covers to show you afterwards. Okay, all right. Well, let's let's go to the camera and uh, I put some uh, penny red group uh, triangular stamps under here. In this group, there are three uh, wood blocks and two normal ones. Now they're, they're not called wood blocks because they were printed in wood. It was just that the the, the metal cliches were mounted on wooden blocks, and that's why they are called wood blocks. But the wood blocks are of a simple design. Uh, comparatively with white lines and heavier type and solid backgrounds and the normal triangulars are have much more intricate lines around Hope. Hope herself is much more delicate and delicately rendered as around the frame, much more delicately rendered. So I shall just zoom in closely and hopefully the difference uh, becomes really quite obvious. Right, so we're zooming in on a normal engraved triangular and if I put this stamp next to it, you'll see in comparison it seems incredibly basic. There are, uh, consequently, there are more forgeries of this, uh, or dangerous forgeries, I might say, of this type of triangular, the wood block, as against this, where the, uh, a, a talented uh, forger would have to render an engraving. So I'll just put that there and that there, and you can just see how simple that wood block is compared to this lady here and another normal triangular and another wood block. As you can see, that, that and that are wood blocks with this solid background. They're on laid paper and these stamps here which are finely engraved and they're on watermarked paper. I shall just do the same now with the blue ones. Let's just move that into the middle there, just for neatness sake. And I shall now move to the blue, where in the, there we, we have. I guess the woodblock issues were done locally during um, the interim period between the two printers. Yes, were they? The yeah. British Perkins Bacon and Dunham. Yeah, they definitely have the, uh, the uh, emergency feel about mm. them once you when you see them against what was coming out of London at the time. There we go. Sorry if I haven't laid these out entirely straight. I'm sure you understand. Um, but here and here, delicately engraved. Here, here, and here. Despite the different shades, you can see these three wood blocks are much more simple, and they have these white lines framing the inner in a triangle. Um, interestingly, uh, I didn't know for many years why they were issued as triangulars, but it was, uh, according to some correspondence that's been discovered, it was to avoid confusion with stamps of the mother country in England. How about that? If only they'd known what was ahead of them in, in terms of stamp printing. So those hopefully will help you understand the difference in look between the wood block, the wood blocks, and the normals. Anyway, Andy, what, what have you got? I have a couple of covers here from a little tiny island in the Tasman Sea between the coasts of New South Wales and New Zealand called Lord Howe Island. Always been very collectible. And uh, we'll just put this first one under the glass here. Now Lord Howe Island is a beautiful and very idyllic island full of lovely sandy beaches and palm trees and all that kind of thing. There's no in the middle of nowhere, but they have their own post office. Now this one 
1930, the Tuppany stamps almost ran out, so the local postmaster decided to make his own provisional on the current Australian Sturt penny stamps there, and he's written on there, Tuppany paid, and initialed it. It's very unusual. It's addressed locally. Now, these are listed in the Stanley Gibbons Part 1 catalogue just after the Sturt issue. Mm. And it's certainly something... I'm, I'm going to zoom often. in a bit on, yeah. on that individual stamp there. Um, and manus because manuscript cancellations and provisionals, they're just so interesting. Yes, because that's actually a, a manuscript uh, overprint, if yeah, you like. Yeah. Um, and and these, this provisional was only in use for a few weeks until the, the new Tuppence stamps arrived from the mainland. I wonder how many of those stamps um, were thrown away by collectors because they thought they were scribbled. Yeah, because they're ugly, absolutely. They, they are, but now we know that they're very special. Wow, that's mm. a, and it's a lovely clean cover. Now, from the same island, I also have this cover. Now, this is a 1931 airmail cover sent from Lord Howe Island back to Sydney. Now, what's special about this? It was carried by Francis Chichester, who was the pioneer aviator of the time. Got lots of press coverage and all the rest of it. And he got knighted by the Queen in about 1970, I think it was, because he single-handedly sailed around the world in his ship, I think it was called the Gypsy Moth. Mm. And uh, again, this is a very rare cover, signed by Francis Chichester. That one's numbered. Okay, 66. Number 66, there wasn't many sent, there's probably, I'm guessing maybe 100 or even 75, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, very unusual. It's got a lovely Lord Howe Island date stamp there. Mm. It's lovely, it's lovely and clean. It is, yeah. Mm. Very cool. It's certainly a would be a great place to visit, I'm sure, Lord Howe Island, but very inaccessible. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Imagine they do have their own airstrip there. Oh, well, that, that probably is very busy these days. <laughs> well, that's two uh, completely random, but, uh, but hopefully interesting uh, uh, items of uh, British Empire stamps, flatterly. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, you'll all say which uh, which little piece there you you thought was the most interesting and please leave your comments below i hope you enjoyed that yeah thank you very much bye